law of variable proportions before coming to this topic let us revise some of the topics from this chapter which are discussed earlier and which are very important to understand this topic okay so first of all we have production function so production function shows the relationship between the input and output right and we know that there are two types of factors of production they are variable factors of production and fixed factors of production right examples for variable factors of production are like labor and raw material so basically the factors which can be changed in terms of quantity during the production function are known as variable factors of production okay and the factors which cannot be changed during the production function they have to be kept constant they are called fixed factors of production right and in short run there will be some variable factors of production and some fixed factors of production but in long run production function there will be all variable factors only there will be no fixed factors in the long run production function okay clear so if you want detailed video on these topics then you can get its link in the description box below now coming back to main topic law of variable proportions this law explains the short run production function okay so in short run we know that there will be variable as well as fixed factors of production right when the quantity of one input is varied keeping other inputs constant the proportion between the factor changes so here basically this law explain that what will happen if we go on increasing only one factor of production while keeping other constant for example assume that we have 1 acre of land okay now we need to carry on agricultural activities on that piece of land okay here land is fixed that is only 1 acre it is not going to change so this is our fixed factor of production right here variable factor of production is labor the person who has to carry on the agricultural activities right so for one acre we can employ two or three laborers right then if we want to increase our output what we can do we can increase the number of labor from 3 to 5 okay then our output will increase so if we go on increasing the our uh, labor in in order to increase our output do you think that always the output will be increasing itself or even though if it is increasing do you think that it is always positively like increasing here the case is the law says that the total product or total output initially increases at increasing rate then at a decreasing rate and finally at a negative rate so basically it says that initially when we increase our labor then our total product or output will start to increase rapidly okay it increases in the increasing rate but after some time if we continue to increase the labor then it will start to increase but at a decreasing rate okay then finally it uh, starts to increase in the negative rate okay so this we will understand later with the help of an example all right so law of variable proportions is also known as law of returns or returns to variable factor so this you need to remember okay next there are certain assumptions of this law okay every law has some assumptions so here they are only one factor is variable while others are held constant so as i told you earlier only one factor will be variable so we can change only one variable all others have to be constant right so in our example variable factor is labor and fixed factor is land okay then it operates in short run as factors are classified as variable and fixed factors remember this law operates only in short run because we can classify the factors as variable and fixed only in short run right but in long run production function we will have all variable factors only there will be no fixed factors right so this law operates only in short run production function okay next this law applies to the field of production only right this law is not applicable in case of trading or service sector okay this law applies only where the production activities are carried on it may be agricultural or industrial right next 
there is no change in technology now the technology that we are using for the production process has to be constant there has to be no updates in the technology okay because it may leads to a differ in the outputs okay next it is assumed all variable factors are equally efficient now this is a very important point the variable factors here are labors so the labors that we are employing have to be equally efficient it means in terms of skills talent knowledge training etc okay so they have to be equal so these are certain assumptions of the law so next up we have schedule and graph of this law okay so after understanding schedule and graph you will be completely able to understand about this topic okay so in schedule we have fixed factor here we know that our fixed factor is land variable factor is labor total product so total product refers to the total output that we get after the production process right then marginal product marginal product refers to the output that we get by employing one extra unit of variable factor okay then average product is nothing but total product divided by number of units of input okay so even this topic total product marginal and average product we have discussed in one of my previous sessions again if you want to um, uh, view that you can get its link in the description box below okay so basically there are three stages in this law okay so in the first stage what happens is we have one acre of land and we are employing only one labor on one acre of land so what will be our output so it will be 10 units okay assume that 10 bags of paddy right then our marginal product will also be same and average product will also be same because 10 divided by 1 is 10 okay so here we can write it as tp divided by input okay next when uh, we have fixed factor as 1 itself 1 acre of land then we are increasing our input of labor from 1 to 2 okay then the output that we are getting is of 30 bags earlier we got only 10 bags as output now we are getting 30 bags of paddy as our output okay so here it has increased right our total product or output has increased right now what is the difference between them 30 minus 10 is 20 so this is the additional output that we get by employing one extra unit of labor okay clear next our average product will be 15 that is 30 divided by 2 it is 15 okay so this is the first stage here what happens is our output is increasing at a increasing rate okay here we have increasing returns to a factor right then again we have one acre of land when we want to increase our output what we do is we increase the unit of labor from 2 to 3 okay now we are employing three labors on one acre of land so here our output will be 45 so surely it is increasing from 30 to 45 but have a look at the difference between them so here the difference is only 15 earlier the difference was 20 marginal product was more when compared to now right so here our output is increasing but at a diminishing rate okay here our average product is 15 that is 45 divided by 3 is 15 right then when we increase the labor from 3 to 4 our output will increase from 45 to 52 but here look at the difference it is only 7 bags right so only 7 bags have been increased so our output has increased but at a diminishing rate here our marginal product is reducing right so our output is increasing but at a diminishing rate okay so our average product will be 13 52 divided by 4 is 13 right so this is the end of stage 2 here our output will increase but at a diminishing rate because our marginal product is reducing okay next third stage when we increase the uh, units of labor from 4 to 5 the output will be 52 again see here there is no change when we employed only four labors we got output as 52 and then we are, when we are increasing the labor still we are getting only 52 bags of paddy 
right so there is no change that is the reason our marginal product is zero the difference between them is zero okay so this is the start of third stage right then the our average product will be 10.4 52 divided by 5 is 10.4 okay then variable factor again changes from 5 to 6 that is we increase the labor from 5 to 6 our output now is 48 only it is lesser than 52 right here it means that our output is not increasing in fact it is reducing right that is the reason our marginal product becomes negative that is 48 minus 52 is minus 4 right average product is 8 48 divided by 6 is 8 right so this is the third stage here our output goes in negative way right remember marginal product can be negative but total and average product cannot be negative okay so this is the schedule now have a look at the graph here you will clearly understand about the stages okay so this is o x axis and this is o y axis on o y axis there is output and o x axis there is input okay so from o to n there is a first stage this is what we call it as a first stage see what happens in first stage so this is red one is total product curve blue one is the average product curve and black one is the marginal product curve okay in the first stage the total product is increases up to increase uh, in a increasing rate up to point f okay so up to here it is increasing total product right here our marginal product is also increasing right so marginal product will be maximum at the point f okay then ap is also increasing right after point f tp starts to increase but in a diminishing rate okay here mp again starts to fall and average product is again increasing so when the average product will be at its maximum that is point s so here our first stage ends okay so this was our first stage right from n to m there is stage 2 right here what happens is our total product continues to increase but in a diminishing rate again right until it reaches to point h okay then here both mp and ap are falling here see can you see M A mp is falling and ap is also falling right so this stage ends when the total product reaches to point h okay clear then in the third stage what happens is here uh, when the total product is at its highest that point we call it as h okay so when in the third stage total product starts to decline marginal product goes in a negative way and average product also declines okay so this is the third stage right so this was all about the statement assumption schedule and graph of law of variable proportions okay guys so this was all about today if you found this helpful please hit the like button also subscribe to my channel hope to see you in my next videos till that happy learning